and gentlemen, welcome to episode number 300. My name is Ronsley and it's such a pleasure to do this podcast for you. And I'm so excited that this is episode 300. It actually, it's actually way over 300. It's just that we stopped counting in between. We moved media hosts and we lost track of a bunch of, actually we had over like um, 600,000 downloads before we moved over to a different hosting site. This is a pleasure. Thank you for being here. We stop ourselves from creating a podcast because we don't know what to make. We don't know what will make our audience love us. We struggle to link all the amazing things we've done into a podcast concept for a certain type of audience. All this leads us to creating just another generic type of podcast that everyone else has made before. Well, until now, because if this is where you're at right now, then this episode is made just for you. In this episode, you will learn how to activate a Facebook group of people that want to hear from you, understand how to produce weekly content without stressing about what to create, and how to make that podcast punchy and relevant. We take a deeper look at how to create content specific for your specific niche and audience, and I answer a question about where to find that audience for your podcast. We also rethink your whole podcast creation by first speaking your truth. And it's going to be very obvious when you listen to this episode. We talk in depth about credibility, how to make a podcast for your audience so that they love you and love who you are and the mission that you're on. All this and more on this week's episode of Should I Start a Podcast? And make sure that you listen all the way to the end because I'll break down this episode to give you three small steps you can execute right now to help you take this listening experience into an execution experience. Also, if you know a business owner that needs to hear an episode about why a podcast is the best business development tool, please share an episode with them. Pretty please. Enjoy the show. Indicator 1, this is launch control. Please advise when pre-flight checklist is complete. Indicator 1 to control. Pre-flight is complete. All indicators read green. This is Should I Start a Podcast? A show for business owners looking for tips, tricks, and ingenious hacks when it comes to growing a business using their podcast. This is your host, Ronsley. He's interviewed more than 1,400 people and has been listened to over 5 million times in 133 countries. A TED speaker, author, and a podcast purist who believes that we can use our voices to grow our business and our influence. You know, because every conversion in any business always happens in a conversation. And now, Ronsley. I've got your notes and I want to be of most help. So how can I serve and what can I help with? So I'm just looking at starting a podcast at the moment. I have recorded my intro and my outro. And the goal is that after this current wave of course people go through, which is about two weeks time, I'll be finished to launch the podcast. And I was kind of waiting for Kajabi the podcast thing, but then I've people are getting mixed reviews about their podcast feature. So just sort of wanting to check in with you guys about how to make my podcasts stand out because I'm in the unique position of being able to start fresh and I've got quite a big following. I've got about 4,000 people in my private Facebook group, but I want to make sure that it is just to hone in on what I'm talking about. I'm a little bit nervous about being able to produce content weekly and make it punchy and relevant. And I know my audience are parents of children with ADHD, so they're very time poor. They particularly like it when I talk about my personal stuff, which makes me a bit nervous. And they also need it to be like straight action steps, you know, like really, really clear action steps and really punchy because they're not sitting there listening to it for an hour. Like I just wanted to sort of have a chat to you about the best way to really harness this like I've got the knowledge up here but I don't want it to be like a webinar where I'm just talking at people I want it to be a bit more casual and a bit more friendly Mm. sure this is cool I haven't done one-on-ones at all I can't remember the last one so really cool to do let's talk about the main thing that you said you spoke about standing out right do these parents currently listen to any other podcasts I think they do but there is quite a lot in the ADHD space but I'm a little bit different in the way that a lot of the podcasts about how to help the child that has ADHD I don't really treat the child I help the parents that have the children so mine's coming from a different angle so I'm all about having to make them parents life easier whereas their podcasts are more instructional about how to coach and emotion coach the child and do that sort of stuff whereas I'm coming at it from a mum point of view like how to make my days easier how to make it 
more streamlined how to have routines and those sorts of things. So it's a bit of a unique perspective. You coach the parents, not the kids. You said there's a lot in the ADHD space and you coach the parents and not the kids. So what are the parents listening to right now? Is, yeah, so they're listening to stuff about the kids. Yeah, they're listening to the things about the children and ways to help the kids. But my approach is much more about the family holistically, like the whole family. So I'm looking at changing the whole environment around the child, not just focusing on what the child can't or can do. And that's the part that makes it quite unique because a lot of ADHD coaches just focus on trying to sort of fix the ADHD, whereas I don't really focus on that at all. I focus on changing the environment. So if I may ask, Sharon, you remember the bit about speaking your truth. What's your part? What's your truth? Why does this matter to you? My whole family are people with ADHD. So I've got three kids with ADHD and my husband has very severe ADHD. And I listened to my husband's story of him growing up and it's horrifying, him in school. And I just decided that that's not how it was going to go down for my little boys. And so... I wanted to change the world for my children. And then once I had my family sorted, was able to start helping others. Yeah, that's why people want to hear your story, right? That's why, because Mm -hmm. that's the part. Is that in your intro? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, so that's the truth. You want to change the whole environment. You want to stand out. Let's talk about your business. What do you do? And you feel confident with your podcast that will generate leads. What does that mean? Well, I've got a six-week online course that gets amazing results. Like it's always had five-star testimonials. I do one-on-one coaching with mothers and parents. I say parents, but it's usually the mother. And I want to try and get more traction from that. Like I feel like I'm putting out so much stuff on socials, blogs, doing interviews on other people's podcasts and everything like that. And then every now and again, someone will say to me, oh, I didn't realize you had a six-week program. And I'm like, oh, like, how are they not absorbing that I have a product to sell? Like, I feel like I'm always talking about it. So the podcast is me just referring to it and trying to establish trust that I can actually help them and to position myself as a leader, like an industry leader or someone that they want to trust. Because a lot of these families have been sold snake oil. They're burnt by things before. So I want them to know that I live it every day. I have three boys with ADHD. I live this program every day. So I I understand where they're coming from. Yeah, I mean, that's not an uncommon thing for certain type of people, myself included. Like not many people, even now, a lot of people don't know what I sell because it's like, this is really weird, right? I'm not very comfortable, but I found a workaround that uh, the workaround is to say that I help people grow their business using a podcast. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what they land up doing, whether they land up going in the membership or the agency or whatever, whatever, whatever. It's just like that. It's the transformation. So for you, what's that transformation? If you think about the ecosystem, right? For Sharon's ecosystem, the whole thing, because it's your living it, it's your whole family, it's your whole thing, right? What's the transformation that they go through, you go to irrespective of what they consume. If they consume the podcast or they consume the six week course, or they do the one-on-one coaching with you, it doesn't matter what they consume of mine. It'll be the same sort of thing, right? So that's what I mean for you. What's that thing for you, that transformation thing? We usually say we provide life-changing and practical strategies and support for parents of children with ADHD. So that is what you don't want to be known for is what I understood because you're the whole environment, correct? No, no, we're trying to say we're supporting them and we're giving them strategies. Got it. How do you think that they feel supported, like irrespective of whether they came across you or in general, like we're talking about their environment where they're dealing with ADHD in some form, how would they feel supported? What would, would for them feel like support? I guess knowing they're not alone, identifying that other families are like theirs, knowing that there's resources out there for them. Are they thinking right now that they have resources? Do they feel like, oh, if there's resources, I'd be supported? Are they feeling that? I don't think they're feeling that. It doesn't get any government support. So autism does, but ADHD doesn't. And there's a lot of hard feelings about that because they're paying lots of money and they're not getting any extra support from the government. So let me just articulate what we've sort of spoken about Mm. so far. You want to stand out as a leader 
obviously this is for parents whose kids got ADHD. It's not to do whether they have ADHD or not, correct? Often they do because it's oh, usually genetic. Got it. But do you kind of say I'm talking to parents of kids that have ADHD or how do you phrase that? I usually that? phrase it for parents because sometimes I've noticed a resistance. The parents don't think that they need help. They think their child needs help. So they think that they're all right. They know that they have ADHD, but they've made it somehow, but they're worried about their child. Amazing. One of the things that you want to do, obviously, is normalize the thing because they don't want to be alone. They want to feel alone. They don't want to feel like they're broken and they're, they're weird sort of Adam's family from the block and all that kind of jazz, right? So they probably feel like they can't go and do things because they are in this mindset. What are those things that they feel like they can't go and do? Oh, often they use the word isolated. So we feel like we don't get invited to things. We get negative feedback everywhere we go, that people look at us funny because our child might be behaving difficultly, get sideways glances in the supermarket and they feel like they are judged for being a bad parent when it's not really their great parents. They've just got a child that has some difficult behaviours. I love this. Now, what I'd like to ask you is for someone in that position, what would they see as being authority or being leader. Let me explain what I mean. When I started off, I was like, okay, I literally thought I wanted to do the podcast of my mentors was my thing, right? So, so what would they kind of value? TEDx talk, TED talk would be like amazing. So the fact that that happened was crazy. Book was one of the things that if I was an author, entrepreneur of the year, all those little things that I don't mention often, but what are those things that for them, you think they, they would go, yep, that's good. This is good cred. This is good cred. This is good cred. And those could even be, so now for me, that can even be, I've helped thousands of people launch podcasts. That's a lot of people, right? That's a lot of people. When I even think about it, I've done over 1400 interviews. Like that's a lot of people, a lot of reps, right? So now those make it into my credibility. It doesn't have to be for yours, but what are yours and what would they look up to that you can now start to like start ticking off? I think that promoting the number of families that we've helped because it's substantial. And so also to like a TED talk would be incredible that I refer to TED talks a lot in my program as well. A book would be great as well. And then that social credit of being able to make people's lives easier. A lot of my program is all templates and things that everyone talks strategy, but I just basically make it easy for them. I kind of do the hard work for them. And I think that that's anything that saves my guys time really helps. So this is really great. And I know you'll be working with Tina on your goals and stuff like that. So Mm. definitely I'll start looking at these things in terms of your goals. Mm -hmm. And this is great because for me, everything started from a podcast. I literally had 200 odd dollars in the account. I spent $179 to get a a microphone and a little mixer thingy. No cred, nothing, right? When I started and half a million debt. And then everything came from there. The book came from there. The thing came from there, the whole thing. So the podcast is your, your root. Don't only think of your podcast as content. Your podcast will open doors like you wouldn't believe. And if you don't set it up in that way, what do I mean by that? If we only think of a podcast as content delivery, maybe the content could be best delivered in a monologue fashion and you'd never get a chance to meet people. And I'm not saying that that's not a good idea. I'm totally a valid sort of strategy, right? But in terms of what you've got to start ticking off is the relationships in your industry and starting to be the hub of like all these influences in your industry. What does that look like, Sharon? That means reaching out to people that are in this area and interviewing them. Who are they? Like what comes Um, to mind? There's ADHD Support Australia. There's all different organizations. There is various ADHD coaches. There is parents of children with ADHD to hear their story and give them a voice. And there's plenty of people that I can interview. Phenomenal. So do you have a name for your podcast? Is there anything around that that you've already sorted out? I wanted to call it the Functional Family Podcast. It's It's funny because I literally just wrote it down because I just saw that while you were talking and (laughs) I asked you whether you have the... Okay, great. I wonder how much of that actually conveys about ADHD. You know what I mean? I'm not saying not to call it that. Please don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that first thought that comes to mind for me is 
does someone look the name and understand anything? And you want to be the face, the voice, the hub of ADHD. And if that's not in the name, it maybe could set you back in terms of what you want to achieve. Mm. Something to think about. I have thought, wondered that myself. Hey, this is Katerina Jubair. I'm a creator, podcaster, and maker of amazing videos. I'm on the inside of We Are Podcast members, or as we call it, the Wamele. If you were thinking about growing your business using a podcast and your online presence, come join us on the inside. I would love to meet you. James and Ronsley coach us to get those reoccurring results in our businesses. If you want the roadmap, which we all follow to get those results, you can download it by following this link, roadmap.wearepodcast.com. Now, here's Ronsley. Who are the people that you can reach out to now to start getting interviews with? And also when you think about interviews, who are the people that you can reach out for interviews? I've got a list on Monday. So every time I think of someone or I come across someone, I add them to the list. And at the moment, we're pitching one podcast a week. So we pitched for me to be on their podcast once a week. So that's something I do often. I just have never done my own. How beautiful to be able to do that now. I mean, with all that, ex- that expertise as well, right? So, I mean, so we tend to frame it in a way that it's actually negative to us, but it's actually not. It's actually a really good platform to build on that We've been on other shows. You've already been pitching. I promise you, a lot of people that I speak to who want advice on podcasts don't have a course, have no idea what they want to sell, have not pitched ever. So you're building on such mountain of value that you're way ahead, light years ahead. So let's talk about that standing out bit. How can you create something, a podcast platform that will make you stand out? Because if you can create that, then not only you will get your TED talk, not only will you get your book, you'll get all your cred because it's the platform. It's your thing. It's the voice of ADHD. It's like everyone wants to be involved. Do you see what I mean? That's the bit that I'm kind of hesitating on. How do I get it to stand out? And I do want it to be different. Like I want it to be a bit more punchy and to be full of value. I don't want to just wrap it on talking about what's happening, but actually make it worth listening to. It's simple. I think, in my opinion, that you have a conversation with someone Mm -hmm. and then you do a a spiel at the end or you do a spiel at the start and a thing at the end. At the start, you say, hey, I'm interviewing this person because you would obviously always talk to the audience as you. Hi, welcome you. Good to have you here. Like that's the way you talk in first person when you're on a podcast and you start by saying, I created this podcast for you and I went out and got this interview for you because I think this is important for you. And I need you to listen to this interview in this fashion. And at the end, you'll hear me summarize so that you actually have something to take away because I value your time and that's your podcast. I don't think it's anything to overthink. It's very straightforward in my opinion, but I want to hear what lands for you and what kind of feedback you have for for that kind of advice. I think that's really great to just be able to summarize it for them at the end. Because I think sometimes they get so much information thrown at them and there's all different competing strategies and theories and everything like that. So just to be able at the end, just to say, look, I'm going to break it down for you. I value your time. If you could just do this and this, and see what results you can get. Just really make it snappy for them. So you obviously have transformations that you deliver with with that information that you give people, right? You give them information, they have to use that information in some way, and then they get a transformation as a result of doing the work. Again, remember, one of your goals here is to normalize. So at the end, when you're thinking about your summary, you're, you're creating these actionable things that, could become a book. There's so many different things that you can repurpose this content, but just go in with the framework. And what is the framework? You're interviewing this person for a reason. You know what the reason is. So you're going to have an intro to that and you're going to introduce that to the guests in that form. You're going to also talk about why you always going to say, this is why me, I believe this, this is what I believe in. 
and there's never been a better time for this. That's why I've taken the initiative and thank you for helping me achieve this mission, right? Bring them on board, normalize it. We want to normalize it. I'm excited for the next 50 people that you interview. Can you imagine what a year from now looks like as a result of that, at those conversations? Yeah, that's right. Every time you talk to someone, you learn something new, you know? Okay. So what's landing so far and what's made most sense, Sharon? I think just having that clear structure of the interview is good. I am a bit worried about not having ADHD in the name that's landing. And also, yeah, looking at the goals of ultimately looking at TED Talks and books, you know, like using that information that I'm collecting in the podcast to not just to promote, you know, the functional family in the program, but also to open doors for other avenues. You're in a good position because you did say at the start that you're in a good position, that you're starting from scratch. So the fact that you're thinking about that ADHD thing now is great. And even if you do stick with whatever you stick with, you've made the decision, you've thought about it, put it behind you and then move on. Yeah. Was this helpful? It was. It's great to just soundboard it for someone who has obviously been involved in starting lots of podcasts to have someone to bounce off because otherwise it's just me in a room. (laughs) Online business can sometimes be a bit strange. You just put things out there and you hope that it goes. All right. (laughs) Yeah, 100%. And that's why stress testing this because I've done this with clients like in thing, you know, like how do you make it unique? And normally how people make it unique is because they kind of go and listen to other podcasts and they have only a certain version of what a podcast should sound like. So they only kind of do some identity or some version of that. And then then becomes another generic one that everyone else does. So that's why to be able to take, how can you apply it? Actually, your end of your podcast could be what you are going to apply or what are you going to take away? That way you take it away from them and the whole burden that they have to apply it even. Mm. So you kind of make it your thing would be even more cooler, I think, and make it more unique. And the final thing, which is probably the thing I've been leaving for the last bit, is that you need to embrace the fact that you're the voice and the face and everything for this movement. And that means not caring about other people think about you, unfortunately. And that's probably something that's embedded into us that we need. And by the way, there's no better person than Tina to have as a coach to help with those kind of things. So I know that could potentially pose internal issues that you might have to deal with, but I know that it feels like you're brave enough to go through that. So just embrace it. I don't mind so much about me or me looking, but I worry about talking about the kids' struggles and things because I worry that they might get to 21 and go, mom, what did you tell everyone that? That's the bit that causes me to hesitate. The best thing in those situations is to be honest about it when you're talking about it. So then say that this is my concern. So until I'm comfortable with it. So you go through your own thing on your own podcast. You know, you (laughs) kind of say, hey, I'm not comfortable with this talking about this yet because and say that, which is great because your followers and your listeners will want when you're finally open and however that works out. Right. I'm just saying work it to your advantage is my suggestion. Well, thank you so much. I know your time is, yeah, it's, it's valuable and I really appreciate having the opportunity to have a chat to you. Sharon, very good to meet you. Please keep in touch. Thank you. See you later, Runsley. How amazing is Sharon? Here are three small steps that will help you right now make an amazing podcast for your audience. This is even if you already have one. Doing these three small steps will allow you to slightly pivot if needed or rehash your whole concept. It's better to get it done right than to do the wrong thing over and over again. So here are three small steps. Number one, what do you want to be known for, right? This is really, really important. There used to be a time that I was actually known as the podcast guy and I would correct people and say that, I'm actually an audio marketing person and I confused the market as to what I want what I really was there to do. So what do you want to be known for? That's the first thing. Take your time to figure this out. Talk to people about that. Number 2, what do you need to do to get there? Right? So if you want to be known for something, what needs to happen for you to be known for that? Who needs to know about it? What needs to happen? What awards do you need to win? What do you need to do? Who needs to know about you? All those kind of things, like write that kind of stuff down. What needs to happen? What needs to happen for you to get there? That's number two. And number three, how can you create a podcast that will entertain, educate, and excite your audience? 
Like if you can figure those three things out, that is a sure fire way to do a really good podcast for your audience. If this is the first episode you've listened to all the way to the end, or if you're a regular, thank you. I love that you're here. Check out our back catalog on Should I Start a Podcast? Subscribe to the show and give me a review and rating. It really, really helps me get found. And if you're a business owner, podcaster, and want to join others just like you in a group where we share tactics and ideas on what's working for us when it comes to using our podcast in the best possible way, go to wearepodcast.com slash group. It is free. And We Are Podcast 2022 is happening this year, Brisbane, Australia, November 9th to the 11th. So for all the latest announcements, go to wearepodcast.com slash group. Stay tuned next week when we're going to cover launching a podcast brand. We cover lots of cool things, including how to get people to give you money for a podcast brand that you're about to launch. So don't forget to subscribe to the show to get that episode as soon as it gets released. Until then, much love. (laughs) <laughs> all right so you still till the end uh you found this useful and you have a business and or you have a podcast and a business and you kind of want to make it work for you and grow your business using this podcast well you know what that's something that i have helped thousands of people do and thousands of businesses do in different forms uh through an agency in a one-on-one fashion through uh, a conference in uh, a group and obviously in courses and stuff so please I want to be able to give you something that you can use to get recurring results in your business using a podcast. We call it the Recurring Results Roadmap. It is years of putting this in practice. It is the blueprint uh, to get results and recurring results using your podcast. If you'd like that, send me a message, ronsley at gmail.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear your voice or uh, want to hear from you. So if you've listened to this and you want that roadmap, please send me an email, ronsley at gmail.com. I want to hear from you. Much love. I'll see you in the next episode.